It's my great pleasure to uh, invite Rick Trainer, the principal of King's, to uh, say something to introduce the seminar, uh, which is an additional pleasure in that our association with the study of cities and the interest in, in uh, their future starts with our training as historians, and, and not just simply uh, in, in, in the present. So, Rick, please, not without giving your biography, which I think is unnecessary. Uh, well, th th thank you very much, Joseph. Well, it's, um, uh, it's customary for heads of academic institutions to say at the beginning of conferences uh, that they're pleased that they're occurring. Um, but my pleasure in this case is um, personal and uh, disciplinary or intellectual as well as um, institutional. Because, um, as Joseph said, um, uh, I'm at least at the part an urban historian, an urban social historian, um, and therefore an urbanist. And so when Joseph uh, and I first met, which was when he was a visiting professor at Glasgow University, where I then was, um, uh, a couple of decades ago, before he went to the OECD for his distinguished career there, um, uh, we found a lot of common ground in our interests in urban history and discovered right from the outset that the, neither he nor I drew a firm boundary between urban history and urban policy. And in uh, discussions over the decades since, um, uh, those common interests have uh, advanced. And therefore, I was very pleased to be when Joseph got in touch with me a couple of years ago as he was leaving the OECD and invited me to join some informal discussions in the agreeable setting of the afternoon, first of all, which included some people who are present here today, um, uh, with the aim of trying to use various kinds of disciplinary perspectives, above all an interdisciplinary approach to uh, uh, cities, to look at current problems of policy and indeed trying to link um, urban policy issues to the more general concerns. Um, and when we first met, even more so than now, uh, the raging topic was the world economic downturn and so on. Well, we haven't escaped that, but um, that helped us to focus on the issue of how an increasingly urbanized world had something to say about the sort of greatest headline issues of the day. And um, through a, a great deal of work by Joseph and uh, other people who were involved from the outset, including our distinguished uh, keynote speaker from whom we'll hear later on, uh, but also increasingly my colleagues at King's in the geography department and the city's research group, um, these uh, interests have ripened into the uh, uh, conference uh, that we have today. So. Um, as I say, it's a personal and intellectual enthusiasm for this event, as well as my being genuinely pleased institutionally that this event uh, is occurring uh, at King's. Um, there's a long tradition at uh, King's College London of um, interest in cities, certainly, and also more broadly in public policy. As some of you know, our uh, social sciences school has had from the outset the title uh, the School of Social Science and Public Policy. So input to policy has been fundamental to our social science concerns uh, for a very long time. And also we have as a, a slogan, some think it's a motto, uh, the phrase service to society for the college as a whole. So the notion that um, rigorous uh, research and teaching, say on uh, urban uh, development, um, the urban future, the urban past, can um, be of relevance to discussions about policy and ultimately of value to the society around us um, is very congenial um, to King's College London. Um, another aspect of this conference which appeals greatly to me, apart from the uh, distinction of the participants, is the, um, the broad reach of the uh, topics being considered um, the variety of different methodological angles and, of course, the considerable geographical 
uh, variety, both of the subject and the people who are participating. We've had a big push at King's over the last uh, decade or so um, to make this a more uh, international institution. And I'm very pleased, for example, that um, uh, Suno Kalani is here this morning, the director of our Indian Institute, because his institute and more broadly our global institutes, Brazil, China, now Russia, and international development, have been an important part of a process which has gone well beyond the global institutes, not just to increase the number of international people, whether they be faculty or students here, and those numbers have gone up considerably, mm -hmm. but also in an attempt to make our whole approach to academic life uh, more international. And I see this conference as uh, another uh, major step in, in this direction. So um, uh, I'd like to add my thanks um, uh, to those that Joseph gave to uh, other people who have uh, uh, played a major role in, in this event as well as to Joseph himself. I need to apologize for the fact that I will be darting in and out of this meeting during the day. Um, I have the, uh, you know, heads of institutions are encouraged by their governing bodies to uh, re relate their institutions to the world around them. Well, I've succeeded too well today. Um, there are three major uh, conferences going on at, at King's, which I'm meant to be playing some role in. Um, but don't tell them this is the one where my heart really is. So I'll come back here as, at, as often as I can. And in the meantime, before I dart off the first time, I look forward to hearing um, uh, Joseph's uh, uh, lecture. Uh, but thank you all very much for attending, and thanks to the organizers for staging at a king. Thank you. Thank you, Rick.